<coughs> Welcome to the third lesson in this series on making disciples. You should have your notes with you, lesson three, and also the advanced notes for next week's class. Before I start the class, I want to introduce a dear friend, Dr. Joan Tan. Will you please stand? She's from the Philippines and is a famous doctor in the Philippines. And she comes here quite often for lectures and all those good things. And I just learned that she's an expert on a menopause, <laughs> among other things. And I think uh, a lot of us will need some expert advice on this uh, difficult period of our life. The way that I got to know her was on the cruise and because I usually go with my wife, we have to share tables with other passengers. And if you know my wife, my wife chats up with everybody. And one morning at breakfast, we're sitting next to Joan and her husband, who's an elder with the church. Most of the time, as usual, I would just say hi and start eating my food. But my wife would be talkative and ask this, ask that, and we became friends. They stopped over in Singapore for one uh, day and they do want to miss church and they came over at PP. I was not sure if they would come for worship, but they came. And every time Joan is here on the Sunday, even today when she have a two o'clock prayer that she have to catch, and her colleagues are in bed in the hotel waiting to go to the airport, she's here with us at our eight o'clock worship. So find some time to get to know her. She's just a wonderful Christian and now a dear friend. Our lesson for today in this series, Making Disciples, focuses on the largest sector of this 12 lesson series. I'm going to spend four lessons on this sector, the new disciple. Three lessons on the mature disciple, and then two lessons on what the Bible calls church fathers or mentors. And then I'm looking forward to our last lesson. I hope that all of you will be patient and though some of the things that we say will be repeated, that you will soak them in because we are doing building blocks and sometimes we have to bring certain things that has already been mentioned. But come lesson 12, if you are regular at this class, you will not only learn about discipleship, but you will be able to evaluate the status of PP and how you can move PP forward because of your understanding of discipleship. And so, today we are going to look at the cultivation of a new disciple. Next week, the care of a new disciple and the week after the comfort zone of a new disciple and then the cost effectiveness of teaching a new disciple. All these lessons are ready at the PP website. We are going to spend a lot of time on the new disciple because I think this is the area that we have most neglected. We go out, we bring someone to the church, we baptize him, 
and more often than not, we leave him alone. And this new disciple has to fend for himself. It's like you give birth to a baby, and then you leave that baby at your doorsteps to fend for itself. Okay, just to recap, when you are baptized, you are added to the church, you become a disciple or a learner, and you need to move forward to become a teacher. Because in Greek, the word disciple actually means a teacher. And Christians were called disciples right from the beginning. And only later that the disciples were called Christians. And if you look at the commentary, the word Christians, when it was used at first, it was used in a negative way rather than the way that we would call a person a Christian at the time because of the stigma that is involved. And yet it became acceptable and Peter was able to say that if any man suffer, don't let him suffer as a thief wrong doer or any of such things, but let him suffer as a Christian so that he may glorify God on this behalf. And so everyone who have obeyed the gospel is baptized, added to the church, is a disciple. And the disciple is a Christian. And so a person cannot be a Christian and say, I am not a disciple. So let's look at the basis of a new disciple. Too often, because we have not proclaimed the full gospel of Jesus Christ, people become Christians, thinking that there is nothing to it. And yet the Bible says it's so important that when you become a disciple, that you have a singleness of mind, that there is a shift in your lifestyle. It is something that is life changing and not merely something by the way. Christ says in John chapter 8 that if you abide by my word, you are my disciples indeed. So a disciple is a learner. And to tell you how important it is for a disciple to learn, you just need to look at the Old Testament, how God taught the Jews to teach the children, and how the Word of God should be in their sitting and in their standing and in their walking. And especially when you think about new disciples who may come from a non-Christian background, or uh, another religion. And there is so much that these people not only need to unlearn, but need to learn to fill up the gap and the change of their faith. Basically, to be a disciple, we need to follow Jesus as our example. Sometimes you get people saying, call yourself a Christian. If this is Christianity, I don't want anything of it. And these people are judging human imitators of Christ, which is at best imperfect. And so it is very important that we keep on pointing to Jesus. Jesus is the one that you need to follow because people will fail and people will disappoint you and Christ is our example and so salvation is free but it is costly 
it costs everything that you have. Once a person is baptized into Christ Jesus, is added to the church, he's already a Christian. There is no levels or stages. Moment that you are added to the church, you are already a Christian. But you could be a learner and not a teacher. And so at this point, you may be like those who are driving around with an L plate or with a triangle behind your car, and that you are not very firm in Christianity, but you're just learning the groups. But the span of remaining a disciple is time sensitive. And you can refer to a new disciple that is under probation or that he is under a period of grace. Because after a while, the Bible says that there is a time that you ought to be teachers and that you cannot stay driving around the roads of Singapore with an L plate all the time. Although I believe that some cars have that triangle at the back all the time. Because we see that after the Bible talks about disciples in Acts chapter 6, by the time you are in Acts chapter 8, there was a great persecution in the church and the disciples were scattered all over the place, outside Jerusalem. But verse 4 tells us they went everywhere preaching the word. I think it is so wonderful that people become Christians. And then because of the faith that they lost their hope and they were scattered outside Jerusalem. And they were scattered because of their faith. And so everywhere they set up their home, temporary, semi-permanent or permanent, the thing that is uppermost in their mind is their faith. And they share their faith as they go, preaching the word of God. Fourth point is the new disciples' growth process. You are added to the church, you become a learner, and then your goal is towards becoming a teacher. It is important to note that as soon as a convert is added to the church as a new disciple, he needs to learn so that he can establish his faith. New disciples should be taught the basic truth as he have therefore received Christ. Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in your faith, as you have been taught, abounding daring with thanksgiving. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 7. New disciples must be taught the basic truth, and their main occupation is to learn. I look back at the time I first became a Christian. I kept on reading the Bible. Every time, every place, and I must confess even when I go to the bathroom, I took the Bible there so that I can read the Bible because I felt like I have so much to learn and I need to continue to read it. Second Timothy, 2.15 tells us that we need to study to show ourselves a proof unto God. It is 
so shameful to be a workman that do not know the tools of the trade. And it is the same way if we Christians cannot give an answer to anyone who asks us for a reason of our hope. And so, how do we do it? I think the first thing we need to do is to offer and assign faithful, mature, and exemplary members to mentor them. This uh, should fall under the purview of our elders who should have a keen concern over new additions to the body of Christ. The way we do it at PP is we put them under the zone of our elders and so it becomes part of the respons responsibilities of the elder to make sure that this new disciple is taken care of. But lest we should think that it is just the job of the leaders of the church, we should also see in what way we can mentor the new person that has come to Christ Jesus and also offer our help in teaching this new person in the faith. Another thing that is very important is for the new disciple to be in the care team. I know it is difficult with those Filipinos who are house helpers, but for most people, it should be possible and care team coordinators should be looking out for new converts because unless your care team have new disciples your care team is going to be old it's going to be stale it is going to be without purpose and it will end up as an exclusive club rather than something that will be wonderful and growing and the way that it should be. If there are no care teams available, it will be a good opportunity to start a care team. But we have been able to establish a lot of new converts because they were a part of a care team. Most of us know Sam, Angeline and William. They are Malaysians. They live in Malaysia. But because William comes to Singapore for school, their son, the parents are in Singapore Monday to Friday, and on Saturday and Sunday went back to Malaysia. When Angeline became a Christian, I was worried that she might find it difficult to hold on to her faith. But she joined a wonderful care team. And she's active in the care team. And more than anything else that has helped her to be faithful is her care team members. And this is very important. I'm glad that PP have care teams. We need to do more. It is already doing much. And there's much more it could be done. And certainly we need to conduct classes, perhaps, every three to six months for new converts so that they can learn systematically the things that we are going to suggest in the next slide. Deacon uh, Terry has been taking care of this class and I'm going to lean on him a little bit to start the new class soon so that people will not only know that there is a class for new disciples, but visitors can also attend this class to learn what is expected of them to become Christians. And I think it would be good for the church to have this class running every three to six months. Now here are some lessons that Brother Cheyem has suggested 
that would be good for a new disciple, that they may be firmly rooted in Christ Jesus. Eight things. Firstly, the existence of God, what the Bible says about it. Secondly, the reality of the scriptures, which is able to make one wise, and how to pray and study the Bible. The Christian's daily walk and growth, understanding what the church is all about, worship, missions, and ministry, and the Christian's discipleship, responsibility, and duties, how to live a godly life in an ungodly world, and to draw near to God, and to remain faithful unto death. These are core basic lessons for new Christians. So in summary, I want to ask the question, where are you? If you are not yet a Christian, you need to be added to the church because God has prepared a place for you in heaven and those who are convinced of the gospel are baptized and added to the church. If you are a new disciple, then it is important for you to continue steadfastly learning the apostles' doctrine and then in fellowship as in the care team, in the breaking of bread as in regular worships and in prayer as in your Christian walk. If you have moved from being a new disciple to a Christian disciple, then you need to find your place in the church through service and through encouraging one another and through teaching those who are new disciples and sharing the gospel with those who are not Christians. But if you are Christian and you are not sharing your faith on the daily basis or on the weekly basis because instead of becoming the teacher, you went back to a learner and you have stopped sharing the gospel of Jesus. Hebrews 5 verse 12 says you ought to be teachers and so you need to grow and get back on the horse and start sharing the message. Growth of the church depends on every member reaching out with the gospel. It cannot be done by elders. It cannot be done by leaders. It cannot be done by care teams full-time workers. It cannot be done by some program of the church, but it has to be done by Christians going in their everyday activities, coming into contact with various ones, and taking the opportunity to share the gospel. I love Sister Fung Yong, who always find opportunity in her job as a nurse, to pray with her patients and trying to share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I would to God that we all do the same thing. You see, in Acts chapter 6, verse 7, the word of God increased 
and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. It was not the elders. It was not some campaign or gospel meeting. But it is the disciples sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, I want to uh, close by mentioning that last Sunday's sermon that I preached on the discipleship journey has been put on the CD with the text, PowerPoint, PowerPoint show. PowerPoint show is a video that focuses on the PowerPoint automatically move and have audio commentary upon it. And if you like to have the DVD to copy it to your handphone or your PC, you get it from Brother Patrick Ong, or you go to our website under the resources section for teaching, you will find available there the PowerPoint, the text, and the PowerPoint show that you can download at any time. And so this morning's discussion question, what do you think is the missing link in our attempt to train Christians to disciple others? How can we as a church improve in this mission of making disciples? And then the second question, the church needs Christians who will move beyond their small circle to minister to the whole church as their family. We also need members who have the initiative to follow up visitors, mentor new members, visit absentees in your group, discuss how this can be done. Please break up in your groups. When you finish, say a prayer and you are dismissed. And next week, we'll go on to the second lesson on the new disciple, which is the caring of new disciples.